All right, we're at the top of the hour. Um, I know everyone's busy, you have desk schedules, lots of other things going on. Um, so I, I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So hi, uh, my name is Cal Marquise. I work for Bywater Solutions and I'm on the Aspen Discovery team. Um, and today we're gonna talk about implementing Aspen in a consortium. Um, and then I'm joined today uh, with Bill Kessler. Hello. Uh, <laughs> He is on our Aspen sales team. Um, he's here to help me answer any questions that you have in chat. So please feel free um, to like ask questions in chat um, and we'll be able to answer those. And hopefully we'll also have time at the end, give you a few minutes um, if there's anything I didn't cover or that you have more questions about. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so let me share my screen. And all right, so hopefully everyone can see the introduction slide. We're all here uh, talking about impl implementing Aspen within a consortium. Um, so my job title officially at, at uh, Bywater is an Aspen Implementation Specialist. Um, and what that really just means is that I help libraries um, that are joining Bywater for support and adding Aspen um, to configure those sites, uh, to understand you know, all the ins and outs of Aspen um, and to really like focus on their priorities for launching this product uh, and this catalog for their patrons. So I'm going to kind of cover today a little bit about what Aspen is, um, some of our goals, what consortiums are really loving about Aspen, um, show you a few examples from some of our amazing partners that we work with, and then, like I said, should have plenty of time at the end or a few minutes at the end to answer your questions. So a little back history of Aspen. Um, officially, Aspen has been what we call Aspen Discovery since 2019, but it is not brand new code. Um, it's originally uh, in 2007. Um, this code used to be called something called Viewfind in a very different format than what we have now, but the original base code was called Viewfind and it was um, a discovery layer and it was more of like an academic focus. So in 2009, um, the Marmot Library Network in Colorado, um, along with Mark Noble, if any of you have met him, he's on our Aspen team, he's like our head Aspen developer, um, he started working on what they would rename as PICA, um, so this code. Um, and then this code really started to be focused, instead of that academic code that it originally was, on consortiums. So really since 2009, the focus of Aspen and that code has been on multi, you know, library system like type consortiums. Um, and then in 2019, Mark joined Bywater Solutions and why we're all here today. Um, and Aspen is what we know and love it as today. So um, with Mark's knowledge of all that consortium development for the last 10 years, um, in the last few years, we've really um, even focused more on those consortiums and that structure. Um, and with that, it's really focusing on being able to break up um, a lot of different pieces in Aspen uh, so that each library within the consortium can still have their own branding, their own features, their own voice, and like a lot of their own choices and customizations that we'll look at today. So before we see the today slide in 2023, um, one thing that happened since 2019 um, is that Aspen has grown a ton. Um, and some of the, the reasons and some of the what people love about Aspen really has to come back to like our main goals with Aspen. So what we ultimately want to do and what the focus of Aspen is, is to make things really patron driven and pay, patron focused. So a traditional ILS is really great for, you know, managing your database of users and managing your inventory of items. Um, but maybe it's, it's, it's ultimate goal is not for your patrons um, like ease of use or for them to discover new products. So what we really wanna do is maximize everything within your library. Um, and for a consortium, that means giving uh, individual libraries within that consortium a way to highlight what makes them special. So on their own catalogs, um, you know, not everyone subscribes to the same e-content within a consortium or has the same offerings of their makerspace or their special collections. So we wanna give those libraries a chance to still be able to promote 
what makes them special and not get lost in like one shared like catalog. So we want to maximize those unique features in a consortium. Um, and like I said, with the e-content, uh, so many different vendors now, maybe not everyone with a in, within a consortium all has Hoopla or all has Canopy or all has those e-content providers. Um, so we are able to break those things out um, within Aspen so that it's tailored to each individual library system. And then not only do we want to make this really easy for patrons to use, um, but we really focus on the implementation process on training and working really closely with the consortium admin team or like elected kind of leaders so that they can after like the initial kind of configuration pieces that maintaining Aspen is just really easy. They, they understand how they can go in and you know make changes or they can support the libraries within their consortium. So a lot of people started to take notice um, of these different things and really like that these things were our goals with Aspen. So today, um, when we jump from 2019 to today, um, currently we have over 25 consortiums that we support in Aspen with Aspen Discovery at Bywater. Um, and of that, that represents over 725 library catalogs. So individually like scoped, we call it scoped catalogs, but like individual URLs for those library systems. And that represents over a thousand library locations. Um, and we continue to grow. People continue to love Aspen. Um, we have over, um, we have five consortiums, um, at least right now, maybe six, um, that we're working with in implementation that aren't live yet. Um, and that's an additional 500 library catalogs and about, I think I calculated yesterday, almost 725 locations or things like that. Um, so you can see how it really starts to grow. So let's talk a little bit about the different consortiums that we support. So none of our consortiums are the same, really. They all kind of operate a little bit differently. Uh, so I tried to categorize them into some groups and I sort of split them up into these three things. So we have libraries that form together for purchasing power. So maybe they're getting better contracts with their support vendors or you know, with Overdrive or these different um, other companies that support libraries. They might come to us and they go through training together and um, they they learn together, they decide and make a few decisions together, um, but ultimately there's no really connection between them. They don't share like any universal branding. Um, they've just joined together to say, hey, do you want to come with me to this vendor and we'll all purchase this thing together? So we work with libraries like that all the time. Um, usually it's maybe like a smaller group, uh, maybe like under 10 libraries will do that. Then we have like our bigger um, central admin, usually consortiums. Um, those might have like staff that are actually paid consortial um, members. So they are, um, you know, getting uh, input from the libraries. They're helping make core decisions. They're really the ones that are focused at in the beginning during implementation on um, going through the full learning. They're going to be supporting uh, Aspen and their libraries in the future. Um, and a lot of times they'll have some sort of recognized brand or logo. Um, they're, they're really well known as a consortium. And then we have something else somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so these libraries may share resource, may share resources. They might not share any resources. Maybe three or four of the libraries within the consortium share the re share resources. It really just depends. Um, and sometimes we also work with libraries like this that maybe a few people that are already branch managers or they're already the systems librarian um, have also kind of been volunteered uh, to work through this implementation and also be the Aspen point person. So whatever kind of configuration um, you might have, we have worked with it um, and we are happy to like work with all kinds of different types of consortiums. They're all a little bit different. Um, so here's a few examples. This is uh, the next few slides are examples of uh, the Northern New Hampshire group. Uh, there's four libraries that just kind of came together and they wanted to add Aspen, uh, you know, for their for their libraries and for their users. Um, so they came together to us. They said, we're going to form this, you know, partnership consortium um, and we're all going to share this one Aspen server. Um, but if you look at their catalogs, there's no connection visibly to the public. So they don't have like a branded consortium um, that you might see from some like larger consortiums. So this is the Madison Library. You know, they're featuring completely different things um, maybe than 
the next library in Conway. So of course they know each other, they've had to form some sort of partnership. Uh, they might be near each other, but they're not actually sharing really anything from an outsider's point of view. So this is just, this is another one uh, in the partnership. So there's Jackson Public Library. They even set up a whole completely different front of their homepage. So these are all their homepages of Aspen. Oops, I don't know, I'm sorry. Ah. Excuse me. Okay, um, and then there's the final one. So you can just see they're really like vary in a lot of their theme, the things that they're featuring, um, all kinds of the menu links are different. The look and feel is completely different. But on the back end, we worked with them to build this out. Um, it's all one server that we're working with. All right, so let's look at another type. Okay, so this is a couple screenshots from Ocean State Libraries in Rhode Island, um, and that's about 50 different libraries in Rhode Island, and when they launched, they launched a few months ago, and what they did is they brought in some of that unified branding. So if you look on each of their different catalogs up in the header, um, they've added a little stamp of their logo, and also in all the footers across all the catalogs, um, they've also added their logo. So just to kind of bring in that universal, like recognizable um, presence of the consortium. So it's kind of best of both worlds in this case. Um, some, some community members might know them as Ocean State Libraries, and they might really um, identify as that. But at the same time, each individual, you know, Pawtucket here, or Community Libraries of Providence, they're able to match their branding, their logos, um, and their resources, they're highlighting different things, um, like across the top, for example, um, they can highlight what, what is important to them. So definitely best of both worlds there. Um, and then what I think about uh, splitting up these catalogs, a lot of times I think of like one library website to one Aspen library catalog. So if I were to go to like the Pawtucket Public Library website, um, what the library would do is they would put in this Aspen URL, and it would take users out to their individual catalog. When they're searching the catalog, they're still able to see all the other um, titles that are available to them throughout the consortium. Uh, but the beauty of it is that that transition from the library website to the library catalog is really seamless. Um, and for a patron, um, you know, they're not confused by like, where did this just take me? Um, they're seeing that same kind of theme, the same type of branding throughout. And I see things in the chat. Let me just double check. Okay, that's just, just Bill's links. Thank you, Bill. All right, let's keep going. Okay, the next one to show off is the um, Wildcat or the Wild uh, Library Consortium. Um, it's about, I think, like 100 libraries in the state of Wyoming. And the other kind of thing I wanted to talk about here is not only do we see the um, like the management of the consortium being different, but so far I've really only showed you public libraries. What I wanna show you here is that the state of Wyoming, uh, their library system, again, all sharing like one Aspen server, um, but they may, they have a state library. They have a K through 12, um, multiple K through 12 library systems. They have a law library. They have research and special libraries. And they even have a community college as well as their public libraries. Um, so that's just something that it's it's easy to still have your own, you know, unique needs. Like academic library has a way different need base than like a K through five. Um, so here's a couple of screenshots of that. We have uh, their state library. This is one of their public libraries. So just completely different, vastly different here, um, focusing on different things. Uh, we have their community college library and their browse categories in the front are featuring things like their nursing and dental program. So much more targeted to their students and like the academic. Um, and then we have one of the, the elementary, this is an elementary and high school school system. So lots of variety there. Um, and the links that um, Bill is dropping in the chat as well, those are showing an overview of all the catalogs. So you can click through those different options and you can be taken out to the individual branded catalogs. So that's just kind of like a menu uh, for consortiums, uh, kind of like a directory of the different catalogs so you can get an idea of what's available. And then finally, here's their state li uh, law library. So just again, just completely different needs there um, and all sharing one configuration. So I've showed you some kind of finished products, the libraries that are live, but how did we get there? Oh, and let me just show you one other thing too. So within the search results, this is what I was talking about, how um, 
the library is still able to show off everything across the consortium and then also the individual things that the library system has so you're not losing out on sharing everything if that's you know what you choose to do um, so you'll still be able to see everything across all libraries all right so how do we get there um, let's talk a little bit about the implementation process so like I've said, um, every libraries and especially consortiums that we support are unique. So there's not really like a one size fits all implementation plan. Um, we do kind of have a, a structure that I'm gonna kind of go over that we typically like to follow. Um, so the first thing is we call it a kickoff, but we're just trying to you know understand your priorities, your communities, your libraries. Um, we would really want to hear either you know what's missing right now from your current configuration, which things you know goals that you have um, for the future. Um, we also you know we welcome you into Zoom. Like I'm in my my office right now. Um, sometimes you might see a cat or a dog. Um, we we love to just get to know libraries. We work with amazing people, um, and it's just really fun to also you know like personally get to know folks that we get to work with as well. Um, from that initial conversation, um, we're going to start pulling together that plan for the next few months, um, you know, looking at the training, looking at how we're going to roll this out to our libraries, how we're going to market this to the public, like all the different pieces um, that make up uh, an implementation. Um, also, we're going to start configuring your site. So we like to have your server, your catalog up and ready once we start training um, so that we can really start working on all the different pieces and testing. We get Aspen in your hands as quickly as possible. So what we're going to start to do is set up those individual sites, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna start asking and inventorying every integration you have. So do you have Hoopla? Do you have Overdrive? Um, do you have Access 360? Do you have Cloud Library? You know, which type of e-commerce do you have? We're, we're going to really start to get a feel for everything that you have. And then like one by one, we'll get those pieces together, um, put in the credentials for all those different integrations in Aspen, um, and then we'll set them up for the libraries that need those things set up. Um, all right. And some of the initial configuration part, a lot of people are like, well, what is out of the box Aspen look like? Or how am I gonna customize 200 library catalogs, right? So I like to kind of show you, I just, I, I took out the text for the this library consortium system, but this is a new one that I've been working with uh, last week, so, or started last week. So we haven't even started meeting yet. I've just kind of built their our initial um, site. Um, and you'll get an idea of like, maybe it doesn't look that different for some of the other ones that we saw. So just out of the box, this is kind of what Aspen looks like. Um, so we'll we'll set this up with your logo. Um, we'll try to match some colors to your consortial brand. So this is their consortial logo, um, what that looks like. And then just as an example of one of the, the catalogs, so I've already started kind of setting up um, their, their collections. We have Hoopla integrated already, we have Hoop Overdrive integrated already. Um, and then here's one of their library systems within the, the consortium. I've gotten their individual logo and started setting up their individual site. So we do help you um, with the initial configuration. So making sure people have um, their information about their library system, their logo, a little bit of a theme. And then during training, we teach you exactly what you need to know for customizing that if you do want to make any additional changes. Sometimes libraries don't make any changes to the things that we've created because they love it and it looks really good. Um, but we will walk you through that. And then it really depends on your consortium and how active they want to be with, you know, with updating of Aspen. Um, we're going to give you something that's really beautiful from the get go. Um, and we just feel like if there's a small library in a consortium that has one or two staff members, their catalog should look just as good as a library system in the consortium that has, you know, 50 staff members and a lot of manpower to be able to um, update and maintain their catalog. So we do a lot of that initially for you. All right, then the next part of the implementation implementation timeline as we're configuring and, and setting things up um, is then we jump into our trainings. Usually we do training with that core group of folks. So either um, in a consortium that has uh, like an official staff that kind of uh, manages the consortium, we'll meet with them. Um, or if it's just some individual libraries joining, whoever's going to be like the branch manager or their systems librarian um, for those consortiums, we'll meet with them so that they have everything they need to know. They have an understanding of all the administrative settings within Aspen. This typically takes about 
six to 10 hours of training. Um, we do Zoom sessions. Um, it's also, I hate to say the word training because it's more like conversations. It's definitely like a partnership. Um, we're trying to work through things and understand your workflows and understand your priorities. Um, so it's not just me telling you do this, do this. Um, it's definitely more of a conversation. And we wanna make sure that you feel really comfortable with all aspects of Aspen. Then what we usually do after we kind of get those initial configurations set up and um, library admin feel really strongly and you know, understanding Aspen is then we invite anybody else at the library system level um, that would be making maybe customizations. So in a larger consortium, if, if you know they have 50 catalogs, 100 catalogs, there might be a couple people at each library system that you know we would welcome in and teach them how to customize different pieces of Aspen. We'll also, regardless of your you know, configuration, we'll have multiple trainings for all of your frontline staff in Aspen, um, usually a few weeks before you go live. And then we're really going to be going over the patron experience. So how do I log in? How do I reset my pin? Where are my checkouts? Where are my holds? How do I make lists? All of that navigation of Aspen so that all of your frontline staff feel really confident in, in answering all those patron questions. Um, and this is, I'm, we're going to be sending out the um, PowerPoint after this, but this is just kind of a, an idea of a sample timeline. So you kind of see the chunks that we, we put these training sessions together in. They're usually between um, 30 minutes and an hour and a half each session. And we really take all of Aspen and we break it up in pieces. So we're going through really everything that you would need to know over these different sessions. And when we talk about what libraries can customize, um, really the majority of settings in Aspen can be customized per library catalog or per library system um, if, if you want them to be. So um, they can do things like the browse categories. So those are those boxes on the front of the screen. Uh, there's a number of different options for custom icons throughout Aspen. They can have their own individual e-commerce. So some libraries use Comprise, some use Square, some use PayPal. We can divide that up and we can have all those integrations active. Of course, e-content. So, you know, some libraries have Hoopla, some libraries have Overdrive. Um, we even split out like things like the Advantage accounts. So those are split out per um, individual catalog. You can have your libraries choose their own facets and filters in their search results. They have access to making their own public lists. Um, we of course, they'll have all of their location information, their hours, the holiday closures, all of that good stuff just about their individual library system. Uh, we have areas along the top, like you may have saw, seen in some of the examples for menu links. So you can bring in, you know, links to your own resources, your own events calendar, your own, um, you know, anything that you want to promote, your own databases. We have something in Aspen called placards, which are like small little digital billboards. Um, and they can also create those, again, to promote their individual resources, um, their events, anything that they want to promote, um, like special collections, they could design those for. Of course, the theme, because we want to show off their brand. Um, and we have something called Web Builder, where you saw in a couple of those like law library examples I showed in the state library, um, they're actually building out web pages right within Aspen. So lots of diff different customizations um, available per individual library system catalog. So Cal, there's a couple of questions. Okay. Um, and Krista, we'll talk about the admin side here in a little bit. But uh, okay. Cal, if you want to talk about if a, uh, a patron enters from a library site, what they'll see, I'll like that. Okay. Um, let me... Back end. Okay. Um, I think this is like my last, I'm almost done, and then I'll cover it all if that sounds good. Okay, perfect. Um, so there are a few just global decisions. The vast majority of decisions are individual by library system, um, but there are a few things that globally, which we just call like universally across all the library catalogs, um, that there would be just some decision making on. Most of this has to do with language display or, or terminology display. Um, so things like uh, we have this one item type code of BK. That BK code has to display on all library catalogs as book. Like there does have to be some agreement. Um, a lot of times it's just little data pieces. Like this status of, you know, it's on the shelf has to display as on shelf on all catalogs um, instead of available. So it 
it's small type things, but it usually comes down to language and data pieces um, are shared globally. And then finally, in the implementation process, you go live. Your staff are ready, your catalogs are gorgeous, it's time to go live. Overwhelmingly, um, you know, the anxiety that comes with change and a new thing, overwhelmingly, patrons after the initial, you know, with anything, changes sometimes hard for some people. They just get it and they love it. And it's a, it's a very seamless transition for libraries. Um, it, it seems like this daunting task, especially rolling out something so large across so many different libraries. Um, but the ease of use is really, you know, ultimately like for patrons, they just kind of understand Aspen and that's the beauty of it. Um, we don't disappear for sure after the implementation is over. We're always here. We have Slack channels, we have support tickets, we have emails. Um, but more importantly, in the open source community, you have an amazing network of other Aspen users. Um, they have started forming different groups together of special interests. We have a monthly get together across all of our libraries where there's like 50 or 60 different people across um, a lot of the consortial folks show up too. And it's just amazing. They've started to form connections and friendships and partnerships outside of, you know, their own um, sort of consortial structures. So it's really awesome. Um, and then, oops. Um, while I'm answering some questions, I'm gonna just read through the chat. I just put up a couple of quotes we had from libraries and let me just take a look. Okay. So the first question I see is, it is clear that the main page is library specific. So what about the back end? Um, so in the back end, if you mean in the administration administration section of Aspen um, for managing it, um, whoever's at the consortial level that can control or support all of Aspen is able to see all of the library catalog and library system settings that are available. But if I'm, let's say I am only responsible, I work at the main library, I'm only responsible for my library catalog. When I go log in to Aspen, I will only see anything related to the main library. So for consortiums that have, you know, 50, 200 library systems, when I go log in, I don't see all of that. I only see things related to my library system. Um, so we really try to take a, a lot of caution with our permissioning and settings so that no one is kind of interfering or interacting with a library catalog that they don't belong to. Um, so it is all parsed out by library system. Um, and then I see a, if a patron from my library clicks on a title, will my holdings show at the top before something held by another consortium library? Yes, they do. Um, so it is sorted by the um, library catalogs collections that you're on first. And then usually it's everything else within the system alphabetically after that. So yes, your collections are sorted to the top and we prioritize your collections. Um, let's see. A question about the app. How will the Aspen catalog interfere with the outside vendor that has created an app for our network? Um, we have our own app called Aspen Lita. You can choose to use it. It comes, um, there's a community version that comes free with Aspen and, and most of our configuration that we do just for the catalogs, um, you don't have to do any additional configuration for your app. But we do also have library systems who, you know, have contracts with other app vendors, um, and we have worked with them, and they have added Aspen, and we're able to, you know, set that up to work uh, for what they need. So, um, and then a lot of times, maybe when those contracts will end, um, they might work with us to add, uh, we have something called the branded Aspen Lita, where they can have your, you can have your own individual library app with us as well. And I have another question. If there are some libraries in the consortium who don't want Aspen, sounds like it's no big deal. Um, and if they want to join later, sounds like that would actually be pretty easy. Yes, um, we do have a couple um, consortiums that we work with, um, maybe from budgetary kind of con constraints or something. Um, they kind of add libraries in groups and that's totally fine. Um, and we work with them with that all the time. There's ways that we can um, like hide different things uh, if you don't want their collections to show or if you just don't want their collection or their their catalog to exist um, that's totally fine yes aspen lita l-i-d-a it's library discovery app lita hold 
let's see one more question uh, we have encore now it's my understanding we'll need to alert patrons to export out their reading histories before we end that contract um, is there any other features our office will need help patrons migrate over from our per current or public catalog to aspen Okay, so this question is more of like a migration question. Um, and if you're adding Aspen, I think we support seven different ILSs. I'd have to count. So I think it's at least seven right now. So every ILS works a little bit differently. And all of your contracts with those vendors are also different. So a lot of things, if they can be exported, we might be able to upload into Aspen. Um, some libraries, um, we can just connect uh, through API connections and we can pull those things in. Um, it really just depends on uh, your ILS and also your current contracts, um, but we can get you more information and like Bill, if you want to reach out to Bill or he can reach out to you, um, we can provide you with more of like a list, maybe, um, if that's a concern. And Jennifer, I'll reach out to you with that answer specifically. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put in a couple of links in here, uh, Cal. One's going to okay. be from the Aspen Weekly. Okay. If you want to chat just a little bit about it. Tell them about what yeah, we do. Yeah, so we have um, a weekly zine called Aspen Weekly. It comes out every Thursday. I think we are in about the 100th and 40, 140 something week, I think, right now. Um, I've been doing them since the beginning. So um, we uh, every week we add different topics. We might highlight different libraries. Um, we probably have at least two or three on consortiums, I would imagine. Um, but we highlight different functionality that's coming out. Um, and it's usually just between like two to three pages. Um, a little like brush up on different topics and we people just really love them we have several hundred people reading them every week so um, definitely check that out lots of different topics on there and then the other one i'm putting in is our helps yes so help.aspendiscovery.org has everything you need to know it's tons of documentation there's short to short tutorial videos um, you just get more of an idea of what's needed to set up different integrations um, tons and tons of information uh, there's also a section um, with partner spotlight information so tons of examples um, of different aspen libraries and how they're using aspen so they there's no two that look the same so there's tons of different inspiration and things there as well All right, so we're, we're out of time today, but if you are interested in learning, I kind of teased some of the integration things. Um, the next webinar we have in our series is August 15th, um, and it's on Aspen integration. So um, we will be sending out anybody who, um, anybody who signed up for today, we'll send out a recording, uh, we'll send out the PowerPoint presentation, um, and there should be a link in, uh, in there too as well to sign up for the next thing in the series. Um, and if you have any additional questions, um, I'm Cal at BiowaterSolutions.com, and that's Bill at BiowaterSolutions.com. Um, we are very extroverted, and we love to chat. So even if you just want to uh, hit us up, say hello, ask us anything, um, we are here to answer questions. So thank you so much for the time today. Um, and I hope you'll check out some of those links, check out some of our amazing examples. We have so many like stellar libraries that we work with. It's truly awesome.